What inspires me for doing research is that we don't do well enough yet. So when I see kids who we can't help, uh, I need to go back to the research laboratory and figure out a way we can help them. Hope is a good thing, maybe the best of things. I try to raise as much money as I can. It's like a drop in a bucket, but we've raised over $200,000 since Kevin passed away, so he would be 20, 28. <laughs> and obviously he passed away 11 and a half years ago. Came back to the doctor's office. He comes in, he said, you do have a brain tumor. It's the first kind of brain tumor there is. Haley was diagnosed with acute lymphoblastic leukemia on September 24th, 2011. It was definitely a shock. The treatment is broken up into segments and they call frontline treatment is about 10 months. So Haley's received quite a bit of IV um, chemotherapy. She takes oral pills daily now. She's in um, what they call a maintenance phase. Every 12 weeks now that she has to take steroids, which is really difficult on her and us. She also has very frequent lumbar punctures where they administer chemo to her spinal fluid. You don't have a choice. The leukemia can do terrible things. Um, if not treated, you know, can lead to death, but the treatment itself is very aggressive and um, has its side effects and most kids don't come out unscathed. Many of the children that go through treatment and are cured, they may have lots of chronic side effects, growth um, abnormalities, short stature, uh, endocrinologic uh, abnormalities, um, cognitive abnormalities. There's just a lot of side effects from the current therapies. We here at Nationwide Children's are doing state-of-the-art uh, research both in the laboratory and the clinic. Um, as, as well as anyone else in the country or the world. What we have in the lab as our main focus of developing is a, a biologic warfare of sorts for cancer. Specifically, we're trying to use viruses as a way to kill cancer cells. As you may know, viruses infect a cell. They uh, turn a cell into a live virus factory, produce many more themselves and kill the cell in so doing. Those viruses can then spread to the next cell, to the next cell, and to the next cell, and that's what a cold is. You get a cold virus, it infects your nasal mucosal cells, uh, kills those cells, and produces a lot of cellular debris, and you blow it out your nose. So we want to do that to cancer. A child is diagnosed with a cancer every 30 minutes in this country. So during your lunch break, two more families were devastated somewhere in this country. Over the last 50 years now, we've pretty much maxed out our ability to use chemotherapy and now we need something different. Only 3% of cancer research funded by the National Cancer Institute goes to pediatric cancers. That's very small amount of dollars and that those dollars are shrinking. We are dependent on philanthropy. We are dependent on gift giving. I, our, that to me is sacred money. That's hard earned money. Uh, that's money that you know folks are giving out of the, their back pocket. And, and if we help one child with a new therapy that was you know, uh, developed because of donations. Everyone who contributed to that can feel proud. You know, I just keep plugging away with my little fundraiser and try to do what I can. Funding pediatric cancer research is extremely important. Our kids are very important to us and they're our future and it's important that we um, do what we can to improve their quality of life. Well, I think he'd be happy. I think he would be happy. And that was his, you know, hope to find a cure. There's hope for a cure someday. <laughs>